Taking her first Delano Pole Award of the season is Claire Ossier, who managed to out-qualify Quan Ching, second place star, by almost two-tenths of a second. Archer Harris got a good start there in third place. However, Claire Ossier, the TM Canada driver, trained as a road racer. She's showing her she's showing her short track prowess here today as she takes the lead and pulls out to a big margin on lap one over Archer Harris. Eric Merlina, running in sixth place on lap six, slows down on the racetrack. Something must have broken on that car. Everybody seems to be splitting. However, there's Ellie Collada, and we've got a caution. Tiffany Matthews gets involved, along with uh, a couple other cars. Looks like Ryan Griffin is involved. That's going to take Tiffany Matthews, Molina, and Griffin out of the race. Uh, your second place in points, Ellie Collada, got a bit of damage in that accident. And as you can see here, Molina's car just turned into a pinball. There's one more car involved, a black car, and he will drop out of the race as well. Claire Ossier continues to lead on the restart with... Archer Harris behind him and Dexter Hamlet has moved up to third place in that uh, number 54 CRPR car and Jim Hayes and John Jefferson are trying to make it three wide for third place. John Jefferson pulls down to the bottom, Jim Hayes, and Archer Harris is challenging for the lead. However, Claire Ossier will hold it. Uh, lap 14, Mark Blackwell gets spun by Cameron Taylor. It's Cameron Taylor's home race here at Piqua. However, you shouldn't be driving this aggressive this early on. Blackwell would continue on with a bit of damage. Lap 15, Andrea Canasa pulls into the pits. Her 05 car is reporting a tire gone down on that car, and she will fall. She will not fall a lap down. She will keep her position on the lead lap. This is your points leader, uh, Nathan Ferguson. He has won the past two races, and he's running pretty strong here today. He's running in about 15th place. Keep an eye on this car throughout the day. While well, Nathan Ferguson is having a good point say second in points, Ellie Collada is having the worst run of her season. She's running in about 32nd place right now, and she took a lot of damage in that lap 6 crash. She's trying to salvage a good run. Archer Harris, on the other hand, is having a great run. He's challenging for the lead with uh, Claire Ossier in the lead. This is by far Harris's best run of the season, of his career, and he's putting a good show for this uh, Colossal Motorsports team. In third place is John Jefferson. He's doing a great job as well. He ran, he tried to run the uh, Decatur race last season for the Mid-South Racing Team, however, he DNP-Q'd with that car. He's got a ride with MRD Motorsports lineup for the season here in the TM Lights, and he's doing a good job. Here is home team, Team Thunder, with Jim Hayes behind the wheel. This team has been around for a few years now, kicking it around in Arla and the Master Cup lately, and this is one of their better runs of the season. They finished in the top five, top six with uh, Bob Steffens at Road Atlanta. Mark Blackwell just unlapped himself on newer tires. He got by Claire Ossier, and now he is back on the lead lap in that number 22 car. Uh, Sakura Matoko is the third place car in points, and she is running in about 20th place right now. Not the best points day, but she's holding her position in the points. And as you can see, Andrea Canasa in front of her has managed to move up into the main pack again. Claire Ossier continues to hold a large lead over Archer Harris, although he started to close it up a bit. James Davison has moved up to third place. Uh, Dexter Hamlet is currently running in the top five. He's running in fifth place, the Englishman, putting on a good run in this CRPR explosives car. Um, Cameron Taylor running for Team Timothy. This is one of his two home races. Uh, pick was more towards Dayton, so you could call uh, the round of Ohio more of a home race, but Cameron Taylor is running to 25th, not impressing his home fans. Claire Ossier pulls into the pits. Uh, green flag pit stops taking effect, and you see Jim Hayes follows her in. James Davison pits the next lap, and nobody follows him. Oh, there's uh, Quan Ching following him in. Archer Harris takes the lead, but he decides that he's going to pit the next lap, along with John Jefferson and a couple other cars, um, including Caesar Villanova. Dexter Hamlet takes the lead, but he will... There is Jim Hayes pulling up onto the track, but he will pit this lap along with the 10 car there of uh, Dermot Scott. And Bobby Dollar in the 98 pulls up in front of Scott for some reason. Not sure what that was about. Buffy Bornez is the only car not to have pitted. She's driving the number 24 Vampire Stakes car, and she is somehow managed to get her fuel and tires to stretch this far. It's lap 64 currently. She crosses the line. It appears she's slowing down. There's something wrong with that car. I think she might be out of fuel. She pulls to the high side trying to let people by. 
She's trying to get down to the apron, and there's Caesar Villanova, and he spins her out in front of a bunch of other cars. Caution to lap 65, and there is the 997 of Axel Anderson and Joseph Cummings in the 04 car to do a bit more damage. And there's another car, the 9 car, who comes in and slams her on the track. She ends up stalling on the track. Tough break for that 24 car. And she'd have to get towed back to the pits. Now, this uh, set of circumstances would put Archer Harris in the lead. Only two cars would be on the lead lap at this point. The only other car on the lead lap aside from Archer Harris right now is Jim Hayes. All the other cars that are in front of them are on the tail end of the lead lap after pit stops. Archer Harris having a career run along with Jim Hayes. Jim Hayes, the 2010 Rockford C-Main winner. He is trying to get by Archer Harris here and he turns Archer Harris. He turns the leader on the backstretch but there's no caution. Jim Hayes just Turn the leader and he will take the lead under these interesting circumstances. You see here he just gets in, he pushes up the track into Archer Harris and gets him just sideways enough that he spins down the track. Jim Hayes will take the lead. Uh, the officials weren't too happy with this. Lang Chong Kuhn and the nine of Troy Adams pull into the pits. But Jim Hayes is currently putting a bunch of cars a lap down. He's trying to lap Jacob Card and Bobby Dollar at the moment on the high side. But that's not working so well for him. Zach got from Circleville, Ohio here. He's on the outside. He's trying to move out of the way for Jim Hayes, and I guess that's one way to do it. He just puts himself into the wall and lets Jim Hayes buy uh, the number 71 subway car. This is on board Archer Harris, and he didn't lose a lot of time. And you can see he is catching Jim Hayes. Jim Hayes is having a lot of trouble getting by all these lapped cars. Uh, Piqua is a multi-groove track. There, the bottom has less grip, but the top has a lot more uh, momentum for it. This is Dexter Hamlet running in third place. He's managed to distance himself from the pack and is catching the two leaders. Nathan Ferguson, I said earlier, watch out for him. He has moved his way back up into the top 10. He's currently running in 10th position. Uh, Archer Harris has managed to catch the back of the pack. Jim Hayes is only a couple cars in front of him, and I'm wondering if Archer Harris is thinking about revenge on Jim Hayes. Mark Blackwell is currently running in 12th place. A respectable comeback from this number 22 car after getting spun out by Cameron Taylor in the opening laps. Uh, Ali Collada, your second place in points, is about to go a lap down to Jim Hayes. She's managed to hold on this long, however, this is turning out to be a very bad points day for that number 27 group. Mike Andrews in the 51 is moved up into the fourth position. He's running this car with Tyrone Stanley, and he's getting a, uh, a very respectable performance out of this number 51 car. Lap 107, uh, Thurston, Br Thurston Blood, last year's champion, kicks off green flag pit stops. Caesar Villanova and a couple other cars will follow him in the next lap. Lap 112, it's near the end of green flag pit stops, and Jim Hayes still hasn't come in. He's reporting that he will be coming in this time by, but as you see, there's a bunch of cars there on the inside. He might not be able to make it in. He pulls to the outside, getting ready to arc down, and there's Brian Morris, and he pulls down into Morris and spins himself out from the lead. You see here, Archer Harris tries to dive in with Quan Ching. I don't know if they're trying to avoid it, but Archer Harris slams into the pit wall and takes himself out of the race from second place. Quan Ching would continue on fine. But Jim Hayes still has to race back to the caution. There's Dexter Hamlet behind him in the 54 CRPR car. However, Jim Hayes will hold on to the lead after being spun out. Jim Hayes would lead on the restart over Dexter Hamlet and Andre Canasa, who has moved up into the third place. Some fans are calling what happened to Jim Hayes there, karmic retribution, especially for what happened earlier in the season at Las Vegas where he ended up getting suspended for Road Atlanta. However, I would just call it bad luck on Hayes' part. Hayes did not pit to repair his damage, however, he's still looking very fast. Caution 4 on lap 121, Cameron Taylor causes more shenanigans, spinning Bernard Strauss to the inside wall. Strauss would continue on fine in that number 7 car, but Cameron Taylor driving way above his head at this point. He has caused two accidents so far, and uh, not really sure what he's thinking. 
Jim Hayes continues to lead on the restart over Dexter Hamlet. Mike Andrews in the 51 has moved up into the third place around Andre Canasa, and Hayes pulls out to a lead over Hamlet as it looks like Andrews is challenging, and Villanova makes it four wide with Claire Ossier on the inside. I'm not sure how they managed to work this out, but somehow, somehow they're holding it together. I, This is going to end in a wreck, I'm sure of it. They, they work it out? I'm at a loss for words, to be entirely honest. Lang Chong Kuhn spins out Caution Taylor, bringing out the fifth caution of the race. Um, I can't really blame Kuhn for that, because Cameron Taylor's been driving way over his head. Um, so... I guess that was well-deserved for Cameron Taylor's part, but he was running in the top 10 at the time. Jim Hayes would lead on the restart with only five laps to go, but there are a bunch of cars behind him that are a lap down as a cushion over Dexter Hamlet, who's running in second place at the moment. Mike Andrews is challenging him for third place. As you can see, Hamlet is running here in second place, trying to put a lap on uh, Roger Kendall, but the amount of cars in front of him, there's no way he's going to be able to catch Jim Hayes in time. Jim Hayes taking the white flag over uh, Claire Ossier. He leads over Ossier. Ossier, he's trying to put two laps down at the moment. Hayes, clear, just clear track in front of him, and he will take the win at Piqua at Team Thunder's home race.